Hello and welcome to another video of our new Gund HM250 fluid line series Fundamentals of Fluid Mechanics. In today's video we are going to take a closer look at the measurement of jet forces. Well, jet forces. When the velocity of a fluid in motion changes by acceleration, deceleration or as in our case deflection, there will also be a change in momentum and therefore a force on whichever body causes this change in velocity. In practice, this is what happens in fluid machines such as turbines. So what we will do in our demonstration today is look at the particular geometry of our deflector, calculate the change in momentum by assuming loss-free deflection adhering to this geometry, and as always, compare our measurements with the calculated values following the theory of the experiment. Let me show you the experimental unit and explain some of its features. The pump of the HM250 base unit supplies a steady flow of water, which is measured by our internal flow meter. This water is then accelerated upwards through this nozzle here, and of course, knowing the diameter of the nozzle, we can quite easily calculate the velocity. Up here we have an interchangeable deflector mounted on a walking beam which in turn pushes down on an electronic force sensor on the other side. And of course during the experiment we place a clear perspex cover over the setup for obvious reasons. Before we run through different flow rates from 0 to 100% pump capacity, let's try to calculate how much force to expect from different jet velocities. For this, we have to look at our chosen geometry here. As always, the force in Y direction, F index Y, is calculated as mass flow times change in velocity, delta Cy, or Cy1, minus Cy2. Cy1 is a known quantity because we are measuring the flow rate. Assuming perfectly true deflection without losses, Cy2 can be expressed as minus Cy1, careful, negative because it's pointing downward, times 1 divided by square root of 2. Fy now becomes mass flow times Cy1 times this factor here. The funny thing is that the mass flow itself is proportional to Cy1, so when we throw it all together we arrive at this expression here, or in other words, the force in upward direction caused by this particular deflector is proportional to the jet velocity or flow rate squared. In order to start the experiment, we change into the experiment preparation screen where we select the appropriate deflector and nozzle side and after that we start the bleeding by pressing this button. The bleeding process is carried out fully automatically by the unit. Even though we have bled the system in the previous step, I would still like to run the pump at 100% capacity for a couple of seconds just to remove any air bubbles which may have formed in the system in the meantime. Now we can adjust the flow rate to say 10%, wait for the force and flow readings to stabilize and record our first data point by pushing this plus button up here. Then we repeat this process in as many steps in as small increments as we choose until we have a full graph up to 100%. This is starting to look very promising. We have a little bit of an anomaly here on the left hand side at the very low flow rates. Um, we will discuss that in a second in case you haven't already guessed where that is coming from. As you can see from the result, the graph only really starts making sense from about 25 to 30% pump capacity. The reason for this is quite simple. If we look closely at the water jet at say 20% pump capacity, 
you see that it does not have enough velocity to start with to overcome the height difference and reach the deflector at all. Once you have downloaded the experiment data in the usual way and imported them into your preferred spreadsheet program, it's time to have a look at the results. Not too bad, I'd say, but you can see that the measured values consistently fall a little bit short of the theoretical values, and we have already discussed the anomaly at low nozzle velocities. The reason for this is, of course, that we are not dealing with loss-free deflection, so our actual measurements include the losses due to friction. We hope you enjoyed watching this experiment from our Gund HM 250 fluid line series as much as we enjoyed conducting it for you. For more information, please visit www.gund.de. Thank you for watching. Goodbye and good luck.